Welcome Taurus to your Taurus December 2021 reading and predictions. Hi I'm Nigel St. James for those of you who are stopping by for the first time. Welcome if that's the case and for the subscribers how good to see you and what a great month December is always because I think that from the end of well I think from about the 28th of November through to the 6th of December I think it's Hanukkah for the members of the Jewish audience on the 8th of December for the Buddhist members of the audience it's Bodhi Day isn't it isn't that the day when the Buddha became enlightened as tradition has it now the 12th of December very important day the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe very important to the Latin members of the audience here today and Yule is the time Yuletide is from the 21st of January uh, from the 21st of December through the 1st of January and that's a time of great significance with that winter solstice for those of pagan and Wicca persuasions and of course December 25th the famous Christmas Day. Now we're going to take five cards because that's all we need, isn't it? Haven't you found that? There's the Five of Cups. I quite like the art on these cards here. There's the Seven of Swords. It's, um, it's interesting, it's arresting. That's beautiful, that Two of Swords. And here is the Eight of Cups. Oh, you're going to like that, I think. I'm already getting a good vibe about that Eight of Cups. There is the Empress. Well. Look, whenever the Empress turns up, you know good things are going to happen. At least that's what seems to be the case when I get the vibe of the Empress. And then I've been doing this for, well, 40 years, I guess. So anyway, why don't you come now? Sit down here next to me. We'll have a good close look at these cards together while I do the reading for you. Okay, I can think and see this one here. Two, three, four, five. Look, I'm going to have a look at this one first only because she's looking back at all the other cards. And so she has got, and is also Major Arcana. This is, of course, the Empress. Well, there are really two mother archetypes in the first few Major Arcana. The High Priestess, who is cold and remote, the empty void or ocean, and then there is the Empress, who is warm, nurturing, and overflowing with diversity and abundance. Now, the third letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Gimel, which means camel, and it is like a camel going across the desert that the Empress carries her child first in her body and then out into the world through birth. But the Empress isn't just the mother to a single child. She is a symbol of the mother of everything, the abundance and fertility of creation, and she carries all things across the void of creation and into the world of manifestation. She takes the child and carries it in her body, covering it with her flesh and takes it across the threshold from spirit and into matter. She carries it out of the dark forest and into the bright sun. The daughter of the mighty ones. She brings great protection to you during this period here. Now I'm having feelings here of you hearing about pregnancy or childbirth at this time. It is time for you to get in touch with the beauty of your life, including all the material things that are around you. You may well find that you are exploring a relationship with your mother or a maternal figure, or of course you may be acting as a mother or paternal figure or maternal figure. But because I also have this I have a real feeling of Hercules with this card here, and it's on the same line that I think that I am happy to also say that this exploration or parental exploration could well also be with a father or a father figure, or you acting as a father or, or father figure to somebody else. You will in any event have an empathetic and caring personality, and it reminds you that spirituality is expressed from the heart and not from the head. And this is also a time for you to be nurturing others and yourself in particular. 
There's a great degree of the planet of Venus which is around here. Venus, the planet of beauty, of love, of relationship, and also of money, of course. So I think that, and a great degree of fertility I'm getting here. Very fertile energy, this, so be aware of that. And there's a wisdom which is coming here, almost a connection between spirit and matter, where you start to put in place those things which allow you to fulfill your potential. And successful business is on the horizon here, or business opportunities. Very much the feeling that this Empress is guarding all the other energies around this spread here today. Now, you understand that the beauty that you see in others, which attracts you to them, is a beauty that you carry within yourself. You are in the process of unfolding and evolving your femininity, or if male, that aspect of you which has a feminine intuitive side. Now, don't be alarmed by that. We all, all of us men, we all have a feminine intuitive side to us, even though the masculine prevails and predominates, I should say. But this is certainly the right time, I think, for you to work through and clarify any unresolved relationships that you have with a parent or as a parent. Now, in your life, is there a beautiful, strong woman from whom you would like to learn? Visualize your ideal woman. Write down her most important qualities. Try to find these in others and yourself. Surround yourself with beauty and abundance and say to yourself, I give and receive wisely. I realize that the capacity to receive is just as and equally powerful as the opportunity to and value to, to give. I value the healing power of beauty and harmony and love, and I am filled with power and beauty. Well, the diagonally opposite card is that of this Five of Cups, and as I say, this woman, this almost, this mother figure is reigning over everything for you this month. What do we have here? Oh, I think we have a bit of Norse mythology, perhaps, and some mythology which is Greco-Roman as well. Well, the guarded heart. Now, in the center is a garden of paradise here. It has two trees, doesn't it? Both ripe with fruit, figs and pears that clothe and feed woman and man, a forever green fragrant lawn, a waterfall, and in the heart of it is a well that leads to another world. Not unlike that well that Odin in Norse mythology hung over for days and nights before he could learn the runes. Now the small well is really the mother of three great rivers that etch the landscape into deep canyons, gorges and ravines before rejoining the ocean thousands of miles away. Now guardian of the well is a pure white unicorn with now, I'm going to assume that this is eight legs here, and the eight legs are of the mythical Norse horse Slepnir, which Odin used to ride, Odin being the king of the Norse gods. And here, you might see it here, is Chiron's key over his heart, and also over the mouth of the well. The astrology here is that of Mars ruling the first decan of Scorpio, which you would expect to be really good because Mars is the ruler of Scorpio in classical astrology. But I have another dose of Mars here with the number five. I have a mystical association joining both the numeral five and Mars. So although you'd expect a very positive aspect to this card because Mars rules Scorpio, it's taking place in the context of this five. And so what happens is Mars, of course, is very fiery and the double fire of Mars, Mars in the numerology and Mars in the first decan of Scorpio, that double heat evaporates all the, the emotional waters of Scorpio. So perhaps there are some unfulfilled expectations or a loss of sense of balance. Maybe there's a problematic relationship around. You should, in any event, expect some disturbances during this period. 
It might also be the case that, well, perhaps something didn't work out as expected, but this is saying don't wallow around in self-pity and regret because new and better experiences are in store. Maybe, maybe you're feeling a little bit disillusioned for your life ahead and your future, but you shouldn't be, you know. Uh, if you are feeling disappointed by someone else's actions, find it in your heart to forgive them because forgiveness releases you, not the person who has been forgiven. I think there are feelings surfacing here which can often point to things that can give rise to fear. Fear of taking another risk or of making an effort in your future or hiding away someplace where you can't be disappointed again. But these cards all interact with each other and with this Empress looking at this five of cards here, I think she is saying, hear me and understand me well, my most beautiful child. Let nothing frighten nor grieve you. Let not your heart be disturbed. Do not fear that sickness nor any other sickness or anguish. Am I not here? Who is your mother? Are you not under my protection? Am I not your health? Are you not in the crossings of my arms? What more do you need? In any event, maybe something, perhaps, uh, maybe you had two higher expectations about something or somebody and you've been disappointed and, and maybe somewhere deep inside you lurks lurks the fear of some disappointment, but don't be concerned about it. Now is a good time for you to learn from this situation. Now really ask yourself, in what areas of your life do you fear disappointment? What have you learned from the disappointment you have experienced until now? Ask yourself this, what have you learned from good things in life compared to what have you learned from things which did not work out the way you liked them to have done? You learn a lot more from the latter, don't you? Say this, I get to know my own reality by learning to see where I fool myself or deny my inner voice. Let's have a look at this butterfly. It seems to me to be here. And what is it? Two of swords. Okay, butterfly, two of swords. Well, this is the moon ruling the first decan of Libra, 23rd of September to the 2nd of October. This is a really happy combination, you know. Did you know that your moon sign really describes your instinctive or emotional energies? Now, with the moon in Libra, you'll likely have a deep need for peace and harmony in your life. Now, Libra is usually symbolized by the scales in astrology, isn't it? You'll have seen that. What this relates to is any area of your life requiring balance, and this includes your personal environment, work relationships, or relationships with other people outside of work. But do you know the purpose of this card really is that of neutrality, being neither good nor bad, but balance. And I think what we're seeing here is inner peace coming to you. Now, there's also the great power to make decisions, I've got to say. Decisions regarding situations or relationships which affect you materially, but also which engender spiritual peace. It might be the, the case that there is at a moment, a period where you have something of a hard time making up your mind about something and you can't make a choice. Now, it's not something which is acute, I don't think but it sits in the background and surfaces every now and again. Maybe you're dealing with the pros and cons of a situation. You might actually lack the information at the time that you need to make the right decision, but you are going to get the right information. And when you get that information, the light is going to go on and you'll see the situation for what it is and you'll be in a much better position to make the decision which is right for you. What areas of your life are especially important to you? You can now come calmly to the necessary decisions. Take the time for deep relaxation. Do that. You're always on the go. Just relax. 
You are in a good position, I think, to examine your past, present and future at this time of year, ready to burst into January of next year. Now write down your insights and say this to yourself. Let it carry from you, through you and into the next year. Deep peace fills my heart. Now, I want to talk about this card here because it's diagonally opposite this. And this, this is air and this is water. And so this is going to move very well with this card. Because what you can get with air and water together is you can either have a very still pond or you can have great storms together, can't you? And this is the Seven of Swords. Now, the first thing I'll say about the Seven is, well, about this in particular, a couple of things, is that, first of all, with number seven, I have a mystical association with the planet of Venus. Now, I also have the color green, an association esoterically with Venus as well. And here is this raven holding the jewel, this emerald that's here. It's also the same color as the raven's eye. And here is the snake of eternity winding around it, a white snake, bringing you karma, karmic benefits and karmic gifts coming your way, I'd say. Now, it is, there's some sort of unstable effort here, but it's going to be overcome by that eight. The the moon ruling the second or third decan of Aquarius, I have that 9th to the 18th of February. Well, the moon in Aquarius. Well, the emotions of the moon. Look, I'll also say this about the seven before I continue that train of thought is that mystically it refers to an area of divine emanation, which I associate with victory and that divine emanation prior to that energy process, prior to the creation of matter from out of spirit, that area is referred to mystically and metaphorically as victory. Well, the moon, I think here, and with the, the number seven, Venus, it, Aquarius is quite a detached and intellectual card. And what happens is that with the moon there and with Venus there, they combine to cloud the intellectual quality of Aquarius. Aquarius is thus weakened, maybe giving you a lack of clarity about something. So you might feel some despondency, inconstancy, have negative expectations. It's pulling on from that Five of Cups. But remember, this Empress here said to you, is there anything more than you need? You are in the cradle of my arms. You may have fears of procrastination is what I'm getting around here. Procrastination, or, or maybe even just doing enough, just coasting along, working beneath your own standards is what I'm getting here. I mean, good Lord, there could also be some self-doubt at the moment to make it seem that some difficulties are insurmountable, but they are not. Or your mind might be distracted at the time because you've got that combination of moon. See, Aquarius, I see, is your mind. The moon and Venus together can act to distract you at a time that you need to be focused. Or there could be subconscious doubts that, that do rise to the surface, but your fears, if you have them, have nothing to do with reality. So wake up and see what is really happening. But ask yourself this though, because it is important for you, I think, in what areas of your life do you diminish yourself with your own limited ideas? What are your constricting belief systems? Say this to yourself at this time, knowing that you are protected by the mother, and also by this as I get to at the finish here, is that you master all the skills and means needed to achieve that which you long for most deeply. So that's a good thing for you. Then we have this one here. And this is a, well, let me make this comment before I go into the picture itself. As I say, I'm 
These two cards, this one in particular, and also this one. Look, this is Saturn ruling the first decan of Pisces, the 19th of February, well, till the end of February. Now Saturn, although it very often has a bad rap, I don't necessarily, it's seen as the great malefic in astrology. I don't tend to go along with that myself. I think all the planets are good. As the scripture says, would you give your child a snake as a present? And the answer is no. But Saturn can be associated with structure, organization, discipline. And there is a responsibility which attaches to it and what some people would call a heavy type of energy, but, but Saturn is good. Saturn pushes you almost like a schoolmaster or schoolmistress to move back on course, to make the best out of your life and what you are here for. The other thing here is numerologically, I have the association with the planet of Mercury and numerologically it relates to, for me, manifestation practicality, skill, and in particular, decision. You'll be making great decision here. But back to the astrology, Saturn in the first decan of Pisces. Well, Saturn has the qualities, arguably, that I, that I mentioned there. And Pisces, of course, is intuitive, spiritual, fantasy, and emotional. Now, Saturn may then be thought to completely deaden the waters of Pisces. Saturn dominates and suffocates the joy of Pisces, and there's the flightiness of Mercury, of course, in associated with the picture as well. But the thing is this, Mercury is in detriment in Pisces, and so we have a conflict here as well. So you might think that there is a tendency towards a feeling of stagnation or obstruction or some emotional blockage, a laziness, an unclearness, the feeling of maybe walking through a swamp. Does that make sense to you? But let me tell you now more about this, this card here and why I think this is such a wonderful image for you is look at this little, well, I suppose it's a child. It's probably a young woman. I'll make that uh, observation, I suppose. That's wrapped in this lion skin. What do I get from that? Now, you said I had, I said that I had the, the feeling of Hercules around here. Hercules is the Romanized name of the Greek Heracles. Now, back in Greek mythology, Zeus, who was the king of the gods, had an affair with uh, a mortal woman whose name was, uh, how was it, Semele or Alchemy? One of, one of the two there, just, just off the top of my head, I can't recall. Well, when I say had an affair, he slept with her. And the result of that was the pregnancy of the mortal woman with the divine god as father of the child Hercules. Now, Z Zeus, of course, was married to the goddess, the queen of the gods, Hera. Now, when Hera heard that there was a child being born from this affair, she went completely deranged. And one of the things that she did, first of all, when Hercules was a small child, she sent a snake in while he was a toddler to kill him. But of course, Hercules just grabbed the snake and with his strong strength, you see, which he had evidenced even then, he killed the snake. Later on, Hera kept the mind games up on, I'll call him Hercules, which is the Roman, Romanized name. She sent him mad so that he, he killed, his, um, killed his family and just uh, went completely off. Off, uh, off script, killed all of his close family. That was the doings of the goddess Hera. Now, he consulted an oracle who set him the task of 12 labors, which is his spiritual endeavor. It was the spiritual process that he was to go through to become enlightened. We call it the 12 labors, but of course in history, in mythology, none of these things are stupid or just made up. They all represent metaphorical spiritual truths. His first labor of the 12 labors of Hercules was to fight what was called the Nemean lion. Now the Nemean lion was a lion whose skin was impervious to blades, be they arrow or spears or swords or daggers or anything like this. Hercules was cast into the, into the ring with this lion and was not faring well. Nothing would work. It wouldn't get through on the lion and it appeared that the lion would ultimately kill Hercules when he said, well, I'll use my strength. Now, the tradition has it. 
couple of there are a couple of things, but the main one is that he actually strangled the lion to death using his strength. He then skinned the lion, and he used to wear that lion's skin around him as divine protection. Now this is a protection which you have at this time. You have this divine protection, this skin of um, this this slain lion, and uh, God is on your side. But it is, I think, time for you to, for you, it's, it's time you consider yourself and really set some limits for yourself and say no either to yourself or to other people. Now that may be an old behavior pattern to always direct your love towards people from whom nothing comes in return. Does that ring a bell? There may be a sign indicating your fears of accepting love here. And if that's the case, what people come to mind for you in this context? Are you ready to dare to set limits and stand by them? In what situations do you hide your true feelings? Do you know there is an angel that looks after this energy here called Rahael? And in the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible book of Psalms, I'm pretty sure it's chapter 16, verse 5 that says, The Lord is my allotted share and portion. You control my fate. Now, meditating upon that, you'll find that with every step you take and each moment that passes, you will feel comfort, confidence, and a stronger sense of direction. Well, what a fantastic spread of cards for you. That's the way it is for you this month. Well, I thought that was really, really interesting. It looks like it's going to be a great month for you, and don't you deserve it? You really do, particularly coming up for this time of the year. It's busy for everybody, wherever you happen to be, and it's a wonderful time of year, and it's a wonderful time for you. Now also, don't forget, I have done a 2022 yearly calendar reading where I use some beautiful Renaissance uh, art cards. 12 cards, uh, one for each month of the year, which I think that you'll find delightful. And it'll be a, and it's a, and it's in particular, it points out what a good year it's going to be for you. But until then, have a look at that. But until then, I look forward to seeing you again next month. And remember though, always, and one thing, and it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.